In the last lecture, we studied the sum, product, and sequence constructions for combinatorial classes. And now I'll move on uh, to three more constructions. So this now the fourth is the power set construction. So again, you assume that A is a combinatorial class and you have to assume that A has no uh, elements of size 0. So A0, the number of elements of size 0 is 0. Then we define P set A to be the set of the collection of all finite subsets of A. And uh, quite predictably, the size of a finite subset will be the sum of the sizes of its elements in the original class A. Now, uh, to understand the generating function for this, uh, I'll just uh, do this bijectively. And so I'll show that this uh, P set of A is in bijection is isomorphic in fact as as a combinatorial class to the product over all alpha in A of um, remember we had this uh, epsilon an object of uh, an element of weight zero um, in the trivial class plus alpha so this has weight zero Um, so this is not difficult to prove. You just have a subset S here. Then you take it to the element of the product R alpha where alpha belongs to A. Uh, this element of the product is defined as follows. R alpha is equal to epsilon if alpha is not in S and is equal to alpha if alpha belongs to S. And you can easily see that this is in fact an isomorphism of combinatorial classes. This here is a potentially infinite product. If the original um, combinatorial class had infinitely many elements, then this is an infinite product. And now using this, we can easily write down uh, the generating function. So if B equals power set of A, then the generating function bx is equal to, well, just using this product decomposition here, we get uh, product alpha belongs to A, uh, 1 plus, and uh, this element alpha, whatever its size is, so x to the power size of alpha. And uh, <clears throat> you can also write this as product uh, com clubbing together all elements of a given size. So n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 plus x to the power n raised to the power a n. And this is also the same as uh, exponential of uh, summation, n goes from 1 to infinity, a n log of 1 plus x to the power n, which then I can further expand as exponential of n goes from 1 to infinity, a n summation m goes from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the power m minus 1 x to the power m n divided by m. This is just uh, the expansion of log of 1 plus x power n. And this can in turn be written as, uh, so you note that if you just take this a, if you interchange the order of summation here, then you get summation m goes from 1 to infinity. And then you get uh, minus 1 to the power m minus 1 by m comes out common. And what we are left with inside is summation a n x to the power m n, 
So this is nothing but the generating function of A evaluated at x to the power n. And so this last expression is a very beautiful expression for the uh, generating function of the power set of A. Now, similar to power set, now we have the multi-set construction. Remember that a multi-set is a subset where elements are allowed to occur with multiplicity. So an element can occur several times rather than just once or zero times. In a subset, an element occurs either zero times or one times. In a multi-set, an element can occur uh, any non-negative integer number of times. So uh, again, uh, assume that A is a combinatorial class with A0 equal to zero. Then M set A is uh, the set of all uh, finite, the collection of all finite multisets of A. So we will say multisets with elements drawn from A. A typical uh, multiset of this form is uh, you would take some elements say alpha 1 to the power m1 alpha 2 to the power m2 alpha l to the power ml where alpha 1 alpha l are elements of a m1 ml are their multiplicities which we will assume to be positive so this is a finite list of this kind this is a typical element of m set a and we define its size in m set of a to be just the sum i goes from 1 to l this m i times the size of alpha i so the sizes of the elements weighted by their multiplicity which i'm sure you'll agree is a very natural measure of the size of a multiset and now <coughs> uh, i claim that a multiset m set a as a combinatorial class is isomorphic to the product over all alpha in a earlier we just had that an element either occurs or does not occur but now we have that an element can occur a certain number of times and so that epsilon plus alpha gets replaced by sequence of the singleton combinatorial class alpha where this has its usual weight in a and this is uh, again very easy uh, you just uh, uh, take this element s here goes to uh, uh, r. so this element s here goes to uh, r alpha to the m alpha where uh, maybe i'll just write it like this alpha to the power m alpha so this is an element of um, a sequence alpha okay it's just alpha with multiplicity m alpha so it's this element of sequence alpha where m alpha is the multiplicity of alpha in s and this you can show easily is an isomorphism of combinatorial classes. And so what we get is if B equals M set A, then B of X is just equal to the product over all alpha in A, uh, 1 over 1 minus X to the power size of alpha. That's the generating function of sequence alpha. And again, I can write this as a product. N goes from 1 to infinity. 1 over 1 minus x to the power n. The whole thing raised to the power uh, the number of elements of order m in alpha am.
a n i guess and uh, this i can write as exp of summation m goes from 1 to infinity a x to the power m by m uh, this last step is very similar to what i did here with uh, power sets so i'd like to work out uh, the details there but it's exactly the same in fact the end result is a little simpler because log of 1 over 1 minus x is just summation xm over m which is much nicer than uh, log of 1 plus x and uh, let me just uh, uh, give you a couple of examples of uh, where these constructions occur let p be the combinatorial class of integer partitions i define what an integer partition is it's just a sequence of non-negative of positive integers written in decreasing order and um, the size of uh, lambda in p is just going to be defined to be lambda 1 plus lambda n. So, so the elements are integer partitions and the size of an integer partition is the sum of its parts. And uh, recall uh, that I have used p to denote the set of positive integers. Well, I claim that P is isomorphic to M set of P. Why? Well, a typical element of M set of P here is of the form uh, 1 raised to M1, 2 raised to M2, 3 raised to M3, and so on, where um, only finitely many of these MIs are actually positive, the rest of them are 0. Right? So it's a finite multiset of P. The multiplicity of 1 is M1, the multiplicity of 2 is M2, and so on. And this corresponds to the partition uh, lambda where uh, Mi occurs I times in lambda. No, I occurs Mi times in lambda. This is called the exponential notation of lambda. For example, if I take the partition 6, 5, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, then this will correspond to 1 cubed, 2, 3 squared, uh, 4 to the power 0. If you want, you can skip it, but I'll just write it. 5 to the power 1, 6 to the power 1, and everything else is to the power 0. We can uh, drop writing it. And right away, what you get is uh, the generating function of Px is product n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over 1 minus x raised to n. Oh yeah, I should say that this uh, positive integers is a combinatorial class with the size of n to just be equal to n for every n. And so there's only one element of each size in, in the combinatorial class of positive integers and so you get uh, Euler's favorite uh, famous expansion of the partition function partition generating function um, a slight variant on this theme is uh, another combinatorial class called uh, the combinatorial class of integer partitions with distinct parts So this is the set of all lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda L, uh, where I insist that lambda 1 be strictly greater than lambda 2, which should be strictly greater than so. So this should be a strictly decreasing sequence. 
and uh, as before the size of lambda 1 lambda L is just the sum of the parts and uh, what we have is PDP is the power set of uh, P because uh, partition with distinct parts is really just a subset of positive uh, set of po a finite subset of the set of positive integers you just look at which integers occur in it and so what we get is uh, another uh, product expansion due to Euler PDP of X is product n goes from 1 to infinity 1 plus x to the power n. I will end this lecture by mentioning one more um, construction and this is the cycle construction. So um, cycle A is now again we need to assume that uh, A is a combinatorial class with no elements of uh, size 0. Then cycle A is as a, is just a collection of all necklaces in A. So remember necklaces from a couple of lectures ago. Uh, these are words up to cyclical rotation. And the size of a necklace alpha 1 alpha m is just the size i goes from 1 to m of alpha i in a. So this is the size in uh, cycles of a. And uh, if uh, I'll just give you the generic function, I won't uh, go into the proof. It's, it's similar to uh, the proof of uh, the necklace generating function. In fact, that is a special case of this. Uh, but it's a little more complicated because uh, the ob uh, elements of A will themselves have all different sizes. So, um, so if B equals cycles of A, then B of X is given by this beautiful expression sum K goes from 1 to infinity phi K by K log of 1 over 1 minus a x to the power k. So this is very similar to um, the necklace problem. Recall, if we just take a to be um, k times x, by which I mean x plus x plus x k times. Uh, maybe I should not use k here since I've used k as the indexing set. So let's say m times x. Then uh, I'm looking at uh, a as just an m letter alphabet and then I'm looking at necklaces uh, in this m letter alphabet. And so you get b is the class of necklaces. in an M letter alphabet. Each letter in the alphabet has the same weight. And we get back the expression from the necklace problem. This is summation k goes from 1 to infinity mm -hmm. phi k over k log of 1 over 1 minus mx.